My favorite what if stories are, are kind of are fun. And I like the what ifs, you know, Marvel's what if, uh, DC's Elseworlds. I like these stories where it's where it's another story, you know, it's another a different version of things. I get it falls back into other scenarios. I mean, I like some people hate that stuff and like, why oh, can't this is canon? Don't f with my stuff, right? Um, I was a person who like I loved this Harry. I loved the Harry Potter book so much growing up that I read the fan. I read other fan fiction. I loved seeing other people's versions on my favorite story. So when these what ifs come around, I don't have too too many of them, but I'd say I have at least. 20 of them, 20, 25 stories kind of a thing. Um, but uh, this one, I selected my favorite what if stories. They were just fun for one reason or another. <coughs> um, we'll start with, um, we'll start with this. This is the reprint. I do have the original. It's over here. I just didn't get it out because I guess I forgot about having the original, I forgot this one is, but it's, what if, number one, what if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four? Really cool story and all that, you know, we all know an ASM1, Spider-Man's and all like, well, well, you're here to work, guys. I'm all that and I'm all good. This is the version where, what if this key event happened differently? When the key event this time was Spider-Man heard Sue Storm calling, wait, Spider-Man, and why don't we give him a chance? Why don't we, you know, we can, sure we can sell some stuff and you know, make money and salaries and all that. It ends up being the four guys, and Sue leaves the Fantastic Four, and Mermaid Atlanteans herself, because Namor you know, is in love with her, and she goes off to him, and so it's just the boys. But Spider-Man gains legitimacy because the Fantastic Four speak for him. But it's a fun story. It's one of my, just, you know, it's the original What If, and it's very good. Next up here, what if Spider-Man's clone had lived? What if number 30? Basically, you know, ASM number 149, instead of the Spider-Man clone dying, Ben Riley sort of dying and throwing out a smokestack, Spider-Man, you know, he, they they end up coming to some agreement, like, oh, you know what? This could work out. We'll, we'll do the whole twin thing. You know, they end up, you know, end up, you know, end up dividing responsibilities. You know, I am Spider-Man Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You're Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, and we're alternate on Sundays. You know, Spider-Man can both have a life and take care of the city seven days a week. You know, it's a fun story, and the cover is pretty cool. Although I never quite understood why. It looks like he's in the smokestack there, kind of thing, but I don't know. It's a little weird scenario that I don't quite understand. Although the book does explain a good job. I just forget that little detail. Fun story. All right. <clears throat> this is what if number 44. What if Captain America were revived today in the 90s or 80s? It's a fun little, well, not a little fun thing. It's kind of like he was, you know, thought out 20 years too soon. Um, turns out there's an imposter, Captain America, who was spreading doing things to help spread some hate and distrust. I'm not sure if it was towards the United States or in general. But I like it a lot because it's a as a good Spider uh, good Spider Man, good Captain America speech. A classic Captain America good guy speech kind of thing. And so it just worked out really well. No, I liked it a lot. And so I like that. So a lot. Alright. This is the most recent one that I got. And I got it because of what happened. You know, what if, number 31, what if Spider-Man had kept his cosmic powers? We all know that Spider-Man gave up his power, the Captain Universe powers, and you know, on the McFarlane run, you know, he punched Hulk into space. He does something where he just keeps it exactly, or somehow. Um, the reason why I end up liking this is the ending here where... Spider-Man still with Mary Jane. I'm a sucker for the marriage, and they have a baby spider or baby a, ba a baby baby spider. It was called baby spider. A I think maybe a little girl or something like that. So Spider-Man still married and has a kid at the end of this book. I'm a sucker. I you know I'm a sucker for that for Spider-Man. I think they still still should be married. I think he should have had a kid by now, and so I'm a big fan of that. 
So, and it's a newsstand, so pretty cool. Pretty cool book. All right. <clears throat> what if, number 42, what if Spider-Man had kept his six arms? Um, I guess the whole s the scenario for this one is Spider-Man ends up, you know, Spider-Man's bit by Morbius a little bit and drained um, in ASM 101 or 102 and mixture of his bite and something like that mixed with something else. Just, he lost the, his four extra arms. In this book here, Morbius, stowing away upon the ship that he was on, jumps overboard, but he doesn't make it to shore. He's eaten by sharks, which is funny as hell. Um, he got eaten by sharks, and Morbius never made it to shore. He died. Never, never bit Spider-Man, drained his poisoned, mutated blood. So Spider-Man, um, I think he got some, in some sort of scenario, I think... At the Fantastic Four related, Mr. Reed Richards invented something that made his other four arms invisible. So Spider-Man was camouflaged and could be in public after a certain period of time. But, it's, you know, it's kind of cool. It's a good story. I do like it a lot. It's a fun story. All right. The last What If book. Probably the biggest... What if book in my in, um, the biggest what if book in my collection, the one that is most meaningful in the end. What if 105? What if Spi uh, What if Spider Man? You know, or who is she? You know, the first appearance and origin of Spider Girl, Mayday Parker. This is basically Spy you know, you know, MCU two story timeline. May, um, Peter and May, or Peter and MJ got back their their daughter. She survived. They stayed married, and she grew up. Her powers developed, and she became Spider Girl. You know, led led on to the longest female title run in Marvel history. You know, hundreds, hundred issues of Spider Girl, thirty issues of Amazing Spider Girl, and then I forget how many. Um, Amazing Spider Family and other related titles or other related books and all that, but Mayday Parker. My wife asked me once, other than Spider Man, Peter Parker, who was my favorite? <coughs> she said, I think she said, who was my favorite female spider character? I don't know, I forget why. I don't know why she had that question in her head. She, I think she expected me to answer Gwen, Spider Gwen. And all that and, and things like that, but I said Mayday Parker because I love who she represents. I love. I'm not the biggest Spider Girl fan. There, I mean, by that I mean there's other people out there who are much bigger fans than I am, but I do love her a lot. She, you know, she, rep, she I love what she represents and who she is. She's the best of both worlds of her of both her parents. So, CBCS 9.0, great book. Super excited to have it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Happy collecting, everyone. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment down below, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. You know, I love making these videos, and I love your guys' support. So, again, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Happy collecting.